At Pendleton Ammunition, they load and offer 10, 12, 20, and 410 gauge TSS turkey loads. They use only 18cc density TSS shot, which is tungsten super shots, the most dense shot you can get. It's 60% denser than lead and twice as dense as steel. This is the advancement that the turkey hunting world has been waiting for. And by using number nine shot, you get to add a lot more pellets to your average shotgun load. More pellets means a denser pattern, which means fewer misses when you're firing downrange, especially at extended distances of 40 yards and beyond. By using number nine tungsten shot, Pendleton Ammunition is able to get more shot, more pellets into each and every load. And they're the only company that we know of at this time that is offering both seven eighths ounce and one ounce 410 shotgun shell loads in the tungsten super shot turkey loads. But using tungsten super shot or TSS isn't enough. You have to have the right combination of shotgun, sight, and choke tube to take full advantage of the tungsten shot. And we're gonna go to the range now and show you how to select the proper choke tube for your shotgun. All right, as you can see, we're out here at the range. I've got our CVA Scout 410 shotgun here, and on the board behind me is six turkey targets. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot six different chokes on this gun, and these chokes are gonna range anywhere from 0.378 to 0.390 in diameter, or let's say choke tube diameter. And we're gonna show you the differences in not only how they pattern, but also how a tighter choke can produce greater back pressure. And you have to test all of these things if you properly want to take advantage of this incredible new modern advancement called TSS or tungsten super shot. At Pendleton Ammunition, we're fortunate enough to be able to load this ammunition and bring it to the marketplace. But with this new advancement comes technology and changes to what we've always known in the past in terms of what choke tube to use on a gun or how shot will perform. And today, we're gonna demonstrate all of that to you from start to finish so that you can learn as much as we have so far about tungsten super shot. Okay, so now we're gonna start shooting some targets. We're gonna see how all six chokes perform at 40 yards. The gun I'm gonna use is the CVA Scout 410. I've put the Burris Fast Fire Foresight on it and while it came with the Jebs choke, we're gonna test that one a little bit later. The first one up that we're gonna use is the Compen choke 0.385 diameter constriction. We're gonna see how this gun performs with this choke tube and the Pendleton Ammunition one ounce jet fuel load at 40 yards. 40 yards, let's see how it does. All right, fire in the hole. Pretty good pattern. I hit a little bit high. Let's take a look. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of a pressure sign there. Not, it's not bad. It ejected well. I got a little bit of uh, black on the primer. Otherwise, it's not much of a pressure sign at all. Let's take a look at the target. All in all, the pattern's not horrible at 40 yards for a 410. But if it was adjusted here, we'd have a different opinion of the target itself. Let's shoot the next choke. Let's see what the 390 comp and choke does. We open it up a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna try the comp and choke 390. This is a little bit more of an open constriction choke. My hope is that it'll perform just a little bit better than the 385 did. Like I said, we won't know until we try. Fire in the hole. Looks very similar from this distance, but won't know until we get up there. A little bit less pressure. As we open up the constriction, there'll be less back pressure. So we've got a little bit less, let's say black around the primer. Got a few more BBs in the kill. But we got a little bit more spray over to this side. Like all of a sudden our target for the Kicks 385 has got some extra BB holes in it, but I don't have any that are way over here this time. Let's try a couple more chokes. We got four more to go. This is the Kicks 385 constriction. You know, one of the things about this particular choke is it's kind of got some porting that is, I don't know, machined so that casts the blast out and away from you that if you're releasing pressure, you're less likely to have pressure signs and less back pressure, you might get more natural performance out of the TSS and shells. Like I said, TSS is new. We're learning a lot about it every day. I've been really eager to try this choke out for a while. Fire in the hole. Oh, wow. That actually looks really good from 40 yards. And check this out. 
absolutely no pressure signs, like no black around the primer or anything. That's actually probably the most promising thing I've seen yet. And this is impressive. Now keep in mind, we're not sponsored by any of these choke tube manufacturers. We have no bias whatsoever here. But look at that target. That is by far the best target that we have had yet out of the three. And the 385 kicks definitely outperformed both of the comp and choke tubes. So this is the choke tube that comes with the gun. Now this is by far the tightest constriction of all the chokes that we've tried. And we've tested and developed the load in this choke tube and so we kind of know what it does, but it's the only one we tried. But let's shoot it so that we can compare them all side by side. Fire in a hole. That one's looking pretty good too. Let's see how the shell looks. This one's really clean too. No pressure signs. And that's an unported choke, but I sure like the way that one patterns too. We have a lot of history with that Jeb's choke on those guns for the last couple of years. So still both of those are better than the two comp and chokes on that particular gun with this particular load. All right, next up is the Indian Creek 390 and Vector Choke. Now Indian Creek is kind of one of the first brands that I ever knew of that was making chokes for TSS turkey loads. And we run them on some of our other guns. We've never tested it before now on the 410 and we are excited about seeing if the Indian Creek chokes perform as well on this CVA 410 as they do on, let's say, our 20 gauges, our 12 gauges, and 10 gauges. Fire in a hole. Oh, that one looks pretty good. A little high, but the pattern density looks good from this distance. Look at the brass, no pressure signs. Once again, this is a one ounce jet fuel load. Yeah, the pattern's just a little bit high. Like it's up here, but man, the, the number of pellets, same thing, every time you change chokes, you're gonna get a little better pattern or lesser pattern, but it's gonna move around. The gun is sighted in to the choke and the ammo and, and the gun. That's another really good performer right there. I'm actually fairly encouraged by what I'm seeing out of the Indian Creek 390. I'm looking at density of pellets. How many pellets do we have inside the target? This is 40 yards, that's 40 yards with a 410. Woo! It's the Indian Creek Invector 385. Same design, just a little bit tighter constriction. All right, this is the last one. Then we get to see all six patterns side by side by side, all the way down the line, 40 yards. Let's let her rip. Ooh, that opened up a little bit. Once again, tighter constriction doesn't always mean tighter pattern. We're gonna have to go down and take a look at it, but. I mean, once again, we had no pressure signs at 390 and a great pattern. We tightened it down, we created back pressure, and we got a little bit of pressure sign on the primer. Now, that's not unsafe or anything like that, but it's a little bit of pressure sign. That goes to show you, when you go from 0.410 down to 0.385, you create back pressure, and pressure creates pressure signs. 390, 385. There's some pellets clear up in here. The 385 Indian Creek did not perform anywhere near as good as the 390 Indian Creek. You know, now we can look at all of them side by side, right? Six targets, six chokes. The gun and the shell stayed the same. The comp and choke targets and the Indian Creek 385 performed the worst. I won't hunt with those with that particular gun and shotgun shell combination. A different gun, or that same gun with a different load in it will produce a different result. Those choke tubes might work great with a different combination of gun and ammunition. You go to the middle three, the Kix 385, great target. That was the first one that really impressed me. I got good clusters, a lot of good consistency. That's the thing I looked at was, it was a very consistent pattern. And when we got over to the Jebs, the 378, the one that came with the gun from the factory, we had a really good tight pattern. If that was sighted over just a little bit better, we would actually have like, I don't know, 30 or 40 pellets or more right in the head of that bird. And then the Indian Creek 390, the most open of the three, dropped a great pattern on that bird. Once again, I hit a little bit higher, it was sighted in a little bit differently, and just a little lower, we would have a ton of pellets right in the head of that bird, but then when we went to the tighter Indian Creek 385, it opened up again. Tighter choke does not always mean a tighter pattern. That's why we come out here and we do the test. And everyone out there, if you're gonna hunt with tungsten TSS, and you're gonna take advantage of that new technology, you've gotta be willing to take the time to take a gun, 
multiple chokes, spend some time at the range, put some rounds down range, get those shotguns pattern tested and select the right combination of gun, sight, shotgun shell and choke tube so that you get the peak performance from your firearm before you go in the woods and start clucking for those turkeys this spring. I know what I'm gonna be using this year.